Well, good morning. I thought I would try to do a little demonstration of the new Hunter Viceroy tools. Uh, the Viceroy tools are a fairly new one on the market. The larger cutter is a half inch shaft with a six millimeter cutter. The smaller one is a three eighths inch shaft with a six millimeter cutter. I find they'll cut pretty aggressively uh, with that small cutter, but also the small cutter tends to leave a better finish. So let me get a piece of wood mounted and I'll start playing. Per you simply push it in, in whichever direction you need to go. And as you can see, it removes wood pretty well. Now we'll go out here, I'm gonna readjust the tool rest a little bit. We'll go out here and, and make a little more aggressive cuts to kind of get the shape of the bowl and to get it rounded off. Now it may look like I'm kind of forcing it, but I'm really not. I've got two fingers on the handle and two fingers on the top. Now if I want to grip the handle a little bit tighter, I have a little less bounce, but it's really not a difficult tool to use at all. So we're just going to kind of roughly shape the foot, kind of get an idea of what direction I want this bowl to go. Let me readjust the tool rest again. I was getting a lot of tool hanging over. As you can see, it leaves a reasonably rough surface, not terribly bad on the side grain here, really good, where it's cutting into the end grain or uh, where it's cutting uphill with the grain, not quite as clean. I'm being pretty aggressive, which is gonna not leave as clean a surface. I'm going to start trying to visualize the shape now, see if I can get a little closer to what I want. Also, I noticed there was a crack. I want to make sure I'm past that. There it is. I may have to change the shape of this bowl to get rid of that. Okay, now I know we've got it round, so I know what I'm dealing with. So we're gonna make it much more shallow to get rid of that scratch. And I'm just kind of doing it in steps. You can see that that makes it a little bit easier for me to visualize. And I'm cutting across the grain all the time, which makes it quite a bit less effort for me as a turner. I think we'll go with a little bit of an OG on this. So you can see how fast that is. It removes wood quite aggressively if I try. Scratch is almost gone. Get a little tiniest crack right there. I saw one around the lip right there, so we're gonna make that a little bit more OG. I thought that OG would take care of it. Now the shape is pretty critical on, on any vessel. Make my tenon a little bit smaller. Um, and the shape is controlled entirely on a scraper by how you move the tool. If I push in, I create more shape, you know, more cut. If I pull out, less cut. And I was going fairly aggressively. I'm gonna turn the speed up a little bit. This is a pretty safe bowl. I'm gonna take lighter cuts. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's actually producing kind of a shaving. 
you can see them on my finger. Because this cutter is cup shaped, it cuts a little bit cleaner than the flat carbide tools. Let's look at the surface now, see what we've got. Oh, quite a bit better. I'm almost past all that tear out, so another couple little passes on there. I think we'll be okay. The rim is not quite done, but I'm probably going to end up flattening it, but I'm going to take off a little bit more just to, to make sure. Now one thing you'll probably notice, or I didn't mention in the early part, the cutter is tilted downhill, and that's what allows it to cut as a scraping tool without getting a big catch. You can also use this kind of a bevel down here to control the cut. You, you know, I don't be quite as aggressive. I'm going to be a little slower, a little more gentle. There we go. See, the bevel of the tool, which is right here, actually kind of controls the depth if I don't push hard. And so I've got, got a fairly good surface around there now. stop and uh, work with a student yesterday so I didn't get this finished. Uh, I did do a little shortcut doing a bevel rubbing cut to show him how much cleaner it is. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. I also dropped the bowl and got a little dent there. I'll have to work on that. Um, but to, uh, to do a bevel rubbing cut, what I want to do is tilt it sideways. I want the cutter to be cutting about 45 degrees and I'm actually rubbing this little bevel down here or I like to call it gliding the bevel because ideally you shouldn't be forcing the tool. So I tilt it sideways, I'm, I'm on the bevel. I'm going to bring it out so it starts to cut. And just you know, let it cut. Don't try to force it. Watch those little turtles come off. The bevel rubbing cut. I mentioned earlier when I'm when I'm shaping the bowl as a scraper, it's just how you push in, how you pull out, and it depends on your skill as to how well you can get the shape. When you're doing a bevel rubbing cut, you're controlling the cut and way out of the end of the handle, and ideally I have it against my body. So I can control it very minutely. I can take off just a few thousands of an inch, but I can control the shape a whole lot better. I'm just I'm moving my body to the left, letting it catch. I'm going to the left. Now I'm going to start moving my body back out to the right a little bit. Now it's gotten out around just a tiny bit apparently. Still pretty good surface overall. I'm going to make another pass out here where it's just a little out around. Turn the speed up a little more. Oops, a little too high. Legs is jumping. Taking just a, boy, not very much cut at all. It's really shallow. Move my hips to the right. Move them back around to the left. Bring that surface up just a little bit better, I think, with a little lighter cut. And that probably will do it. Um, yeah, that'll easily sand with 220 grit. I'm going to have to go back and finish that when I reverse turn the bowl. But it's looking pretty good overall. So let me go back and show you how it works on the inside now. Okay, I've turned it around now, and I, I rounded off the corner just a tiny bit uh, to see where I'm at. I like to run the dust collector when I'm doing this stuff, but I can't when I do videos. <laughs> so, we'll turn the speed up a little bit. 
Uh, I kind of do this the way I do most bowls. I start out kind of roughly flattening the surface. And then what I try to do is I try to take it down an inch at a time, kind of overall. So again, by pushing straight in, I'm going across the grain, so it cuts very quickly. If I, if I cut like this, I'm cutting right straight toward the grain, so it's just slower cut as far as wasting the way it is. So that's about how thick I want it overall.
like that's probably a little thick right in there, and it is just a little bit. I could use, uh, you really want to know, use my Thompson T gauge. We're on the red mark. Yeah, right about there, we're back out to the green. So it's just a little bit thick. So I'm going to do bevel rubbing cuts for this last part. Again, I want to merge those cuts right there. Should be pretty good. Now, one thing I didn't show you before, this tool can also be used very well as a shear scraper. This way I'm bevel rubbing and doing a shear cut. This is a scraping cut. If I turn it so the cutter is facing the wood, I'm doing a scraping cut. Now, I can probably show you somewhat. Uh, let me make sure I can see that on the camera. No, I can't. <laughs> um, we'll use the bottom part of this circle. When I'm pulling the cutter out, if I pull the cutter out so that it's flat, I'm cutting with the bottom edge or shear scraping with the bottom edge. We'll call that six o'clock. If I pull the handle out a little ways, it moves the cut up to this area. So I'm cutting about 730. So you can see the wood would pass that edge at a, at a shearing angle now. So it's more of a shear scrape. So I'll show you that. In other words, right here, I'm kind of parallel to the side. So I'm cutting with the bottom of the cutter. If I pull the handle out, I'm shear scraping. So, and I've got the tool rest way too low. Sorry about that. Go back up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the handle out a little bit and I'm just gonna shear scrape. And what I'm trying to do is just clean up those little tool marks. Or if I had an area that wasn't blended properly. I've got to move the tool lift out just a tiny bit to do this area out here. And I'm going to dampen the vibrations with my finger. There we go. That should leave me a surface. i got some little marks right there. Normally, that would be about 220 grit. But those areas are right through there. I didn't get quite right. Okay, that's pretty good. Alright, let's go ahead and... Are we okay? Yeah, we're okay and depth that way. Actually, kind of cutting parallel to the grain, so I can go in this direction. Not hurt. The, I won't tear it out too badly. Get my light down where I can see. There we go. All right, we're ready for the final double rubbing test. Again, I'm controlling the tool with my body. Do that last little bit. Now, when you get right to the center, if I keep the tool at this angle, which is about 45 degrees, when I get past center, it continues to cut. If I turn it around like this, when it gets to the center, it simply stops. And so I don't have a, a little dimple in the middle that I got to get rid of later by sanding. I learned that from Nick Cook. You know, occasionally you'll learn something from that man. <laughs> okay. We're just a little thick in the bottom. So another, another pass through there. I'm going to leave it just a hair thick right in the very bottom to add some weight to it. Not, I think I still got it just a little bit too much. Yeah, that's one more pass. <clears throat> I'm 
overestimating myself. One more pass. one area right there where you can see sort of a burnishing mark. If you push on the bevel too hard with any tool, you're going to get a kind of a burnished area. And you got to get rid of that because when you sand it out, you won't see it, but when you put finish on, you will see it. I'm going to go back here and tear straight and just clean up that area. should be pretty good. All right, that didn't take as long as you thought it would take. Okay, I'm going to reverse turn the bottom using a vacuum chuck and uh, the wood was a little porous. It had a little hole here that I patched, but it wasn't leaking there. It's leaking through the wood. So a trick that I use occasionally is I take uh, stretch wrap and wrap it around it. And that seemed to work. I'm pulling uh, yeah, about 20, 21 inches of mercury, which is a little bit much for a bolt that thin, but I'm, I'm only supporting it from about here on my chuck, so that should work pretty well. We're going to start off doing it uh, with the tailstock engaged like you always should. try to make it thin outside the bowl so when you break that off you don't break it off on the inside. Get my tail stock out of the way. Let's go back. Uh oh. I've lost my vacuum. Oh it's because my chuck came loose. Tightened up the chuck. Apparently, I didn't put it on there real snug a minute ago. I'm going to take a little bit lighter cuts. I'm trying not to push sideways. If I do any pushing at all, it's going to be straight toward the chuck. That kind of really guarantees that you'll uh, not push it off the back of the chuck. Okay, we've got it pretty good. 
I'm going to go back in and do a bevel rubbing cut. Let me get rid of my tailstock. I really don't want to stick my elbow in it. Do a fairly light cut when you're doing this. Again, you're pushing toward the outside, which is where the vacuum chuck is the weakest. If I want a sharper corner, of course I might use a different tool to do that. I'm going to clean it up just a little bit more by twisting the hunter tool. I want it somewhat rounded, but not real steep in there. That's pretty good. Alright, we'll hit it with some sand vapor and we'll be done. Okay, here's the finished bowl. Um, it's about five millimeter thick overall up until the very bottom, which is about seven millimeters. It's about seven inches wide. Um, and it came out pretty well, I think. Uh, this tool is extremely easy to use.